Right, good morning. Um, just to let you know that my invitation to talk happened about two days ago. I was with Dr. Mordi, and he said to me, Ian, where do you live nowadays? And I said to him, trying not to be facetious, I said, I live in that little place called Earth. And he said, fantastic, perfect, you're talking at the conference um, on Sunday. So that's how I got my invitation, and that's the sum total of the preparation. So please forgive me. But I think there was a reason in him inviting me, because there's so many other significant people, and after the original panel, um, I'm here to lower the bar. Because we have professors, doctors, everything else between us, um, billionaires and very successful individuals, and I'm just a humble miner. So please forgive me. But in terms of the, the global world, I have traveled and, and lived extensively, and as I say, the reason I say I live in that place called Earth is because in most months I spend as many nights on, in the air as I do in any other single place in the world. And it's quite a privilege, um, having grown up in, in humble South Africa back in the apartheid era, where we were very restricted. We didn't even get television until about uh, 79, somewhere around about there. We had a very restrictive view of the world, and today to travel and see the world is just such a fantastic privilege. But one of the things I, I thought that we should do is if we really are wanting to be global citizens, there's no better way to start that than to practice some global customs. And I was fortunate enough to spend at least 10 years living in Tanzania um, in, in an area where the, it's very rich with Maasai. And I know the Maasai is a very colorful, very rich culture. And whenever they have a meeting like this, they have a tradition, a way of starting the meeting. And I find it works really well because it gets, especially after a while of politicians, etc., it gets the blood going. And what it is, and I want you to practice it, and we're going to keep practicing until you get it right. So we try and get it right first time. But I will say a word, and after I've said the word, you guys all shout, you shout, oh yeah! Okay, so we'll try. Sunshine! Oh yeah! There we are. That's perfect. So then from there, and it, this is the way it works, it's a theme, it builds. And the, the theme would be something like this. Earth! Oh yeah! Global citizens of the world! Oh yeah! London! Oh yeah! And then the final one I'll do on myself, Dr. Mordi. Jew! And basically what that means is, oh yeah, is a Messiah translation of, oh yeah. So, you know, they've kind of adopted it a little bit. But Jew means up in Swahili. And basically it's celebrating life, celebrating the world, celebrating being together, and of course lifting Dr. Mordi up, thanking him for having us all here together. Now, in about 99, 2000, if you haven't heard it, it was never very popular, but there was a little song called the Sunscreen Song. And this sunscreen song is music and somebody talking over the music. And it starts off saying, wear sunscreen. And then it goes on and he said, the rest of what I'm about to tell you is nothing other than the ramblings of my own imaginations. So do with them what you will. But the only thing I can tell you with confidence is wear sunscreen. And I think in terms of my discussion, I don't think that's true for everybody else, but certainly in terms of my discussion, I can give you that same advice. Wear sunscreen. The rest of it is really my imaginations, my passion, my belief in this world, and what I think we can and should be doing based on my travels and my experience, but it's nothing more than that, and do what it as you will. But what I do realize, what I have seen as we travel around the world, as I said, I grew up in South Africa in a very apartheid era where even what we heard and what we watched and what we saw was restricted by the state. The state had a certain vision that it wanted us to appreciate, and this is how it felt we should be. And I felt that my experiences and my beliefs and my values in this world were unique to me and that the rest of the world was so different. It was so much bigger and it was so much greater and it was so much cleverer and our feelings were just mine. But what I can tell you without a doubt is as I travel the world today and literally I travel, as I said, east, west, north, south uh, on a constant basis is we as humans are all pretty much the same. Deep down at our core, every one of us wants to be loved we want to be appreciated, we want to love others, we want to grow, we want to leave a legacy. Every one of us hates war, we hate strife, we fear the economy, and we fear our children growing up and going in the wrong direction. And it's those core values that are the same to every single one of us. And I think that's what we really need to be focusing on. And that's such a fantastic thing to realize that the core. So as I travel the world, very often I'm going into unique places. I will often go into Colombia, into an area that was once controlled by the paramilitary to go and look at emerald mines. Or I might go into Madagascar, or I'm very often going into deepest Africa in areas where I'm, I've done it on a motorcycle where it's just me and I've spent a night sleeping and I wake up in the morning with a whole lot of local people looking at this shiny motorcycle. But I've never, ever, ever felt afraid. I've never felt threatened. 
I've never felt kind of that I, that I need to be worried because I've lived a philosophy that when I meet somebody, I look for the heart. I don't look for the person. I don't look for the shell. And every single person I've ever met has a heart, has a soul. And when you can touch with that heart and you can touch with a soul, you, you share, you can connect. Now, some of us, like an onion, some of us maybe have, you know, maybe like a flower, have one set of petals we have to pull apart before we see the heart. And some of us have layers of layers of layers wherever you go in the world. And what you've got to realize is those number of layers is not anyone's fault. It's not, you can't blame them. It's the life they grew up. It's the life that they existed. But what we need to do is look at that heart. And what I can really tell you, the most important thing in terms of myself, and I hear somebody talks about youth, and I hope when you were talking, who was talking earlier about youth? I hope you meant young people like myself. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so when it comes to youth, and another thing when it comes to women and empowerment for women, I don't know if I agree with that because I can tell you emphatically that I am the boss of my house. And my wife has given me permission to say that in public. <laughs> okay. And most men, I know that's true. So when it talks of empowerment, ladies, you are empowered long, long time ago. That's a given. That's a fact. So all of these things are there. We make them. But the bottom line, we as humans are the same. We are the same. The culture is the same. And what we need to do is look through to that and find a way. And finally, before I step down, because they're about to get me to sit down and it's enough for me, I think my opinion, you know, if we as global citizens around the world, if we want to make transformation, if we want to make change, what we need to do is focus on the opportunity that lies in between each and every one of us. The moment we look to that wealthy person to make the change or that government to make the change or that whatever to make the technology to make... All of those are important conduits, but nothing happens if it's not us. I can tell you, I was a comrade with the, the ANC back in South Africa. We fought for change. We fought for revolution. But the change that came and the freedom that came and the liberation that came, came from the individuals. It came from one, 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 one. Each individual believing they can make a difference. I look at it with my company and I tell my employees that work for me, with, the, with what I give you, the least important thing that I give you every month, the least important is your salary. Even though you think it's the most important, it's the least. The next most important thing I can give you is a pleasant working environment. And working environment where you wake up in the morning and say, I want to go to work. I meet people all the time. I don't hate my job. I hate my life. I hate my wife. I don't understand that. They say, I can't afford to change. I say, you cannot afford not to change. To do something that you hate when life is so precious is crazy. But the very most important thing I can give my employees, the very most, is a learning environment, an environment where they can constantly grow, where they can constantly develop. And I say to them, I say, look at yourself. Take the time every morning as you're doing your hair, your makeup, your shaving. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, who am I right now? And when you go home tonight, look at yourself again. And if you have not grown, and if you have not developed, and if you haven't become a more sellable and important part com commodity and a more important part of this global community of ours, I have failed. And that's the most important thing. But herein comes the catch. In order for that to succeed, the individual themselves has to embrace that. They have to. And finally, just in closing here, yeah, I've been living in England now for two years. And people say to me, coming from Africa, and you can hear my funny accent, how do you find England? And I say, I love England. Pity about the English. <laughs> and now I must explain that. Because I come to England and I find it's a great country. As a minor, I wanted to use an expletive, like an adjective in advance, but I can't. So it's a great country. The roads work, the schools work, the trains work. The education works, the police works, the security works. It's fantastic. And yet every morning I see every Englishman here, oh, the train is late. It's five, not even, one minute late. The train's late again. In Africa, if it's late by a day, it's still early often. <laughs> it works. And what I say is every, and this is where Dr. Modi was, on those young people, they have to. If you want to transform young people, they must want to change. And the best thing that any one of us can do, especially in English people, go and spend time in India. Go and spend time in Africa. Go and spend time around the world and become part of a global citizen. But 
as we become global citizens, embrace the sameness, embrace the love, but never, ever, ever forget your individual cultures. Never forget the values your mom and dad taught you because it's the bringing the together, loving your Africanness, loving your Indianness, loving your Asian, loving your English or American, whatever. Celebrate that, but celebrate the commonality. And in my opinion, if there's one culture that has done that better than anyone else, African is probably number two, but the Indians. Indians, wherever you go, have kept their culture, and it's fantastic. It's a wonderful thing to see. Enough from me. No one was supposed to be showing me five minutes. I've obviously done it short, but thank you very much. <laughs>